oh shit, they're talking about that. That's kind of taboo. And then you want to laugh, but you hear the person next to you laughing too. Then it gives you permission to laugh. Yeah. And then it's not yep. that big of a deal because there's like a collective mind of laughs yeah. that we're making of something that is actually like maybe a big deal or a big problem or something that is fucked up. Yeah. We're making fun of it. So we're doing therapy together. are here today drinking some Jack Daniels and no I'm kidding hello Carl hello how are you that was gonna be our intro I was recording no (laughs) that's a perfect intro (laughs) how are you doing Macarena I'm doing well I'm doing well welcome to bearing the how podcast today I have Macarena on hello she she's one of my best friends Oh, you're the first, you. you're actually the, you know, you're the first friend that I made when I moved out here to LA. You're Literally. actually my second. Really? Yeah. Well, you know how we met? <laughs> Everyone listen to this. I'm going to just give the gist of it and then I'll let you take over and talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. Okay, you can talk about it. Macarena and I met in this place that we like to call the June house. The June house. Which is this, it was this four bedroom, four bedrooms or was it no, three no, bedrooms? It was three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. It's four bunk beds. You want to, do you want to tell them? No, you tell So it's a three bedroom. It was this three bedroom house on June Street in fucking Hollywood, like in the middle of Hollywood (laughs) with four people living in each bedroom, which (laughs) is what you got to do when you when you move out here alone and you have no friends. That's what you got to do. And um, our bedroom was also co-ed. Yeah. So it was weird. It was a little weird. Yeah. We shared a bathroom for people that were like mm, pubics everywhere. (laughs) That's so. T- <laughs> okay, who was sorry. The, no, who was the guy? Who was the guy that would like shave his hair all over the sink? And the stuff? French guy. Yeah, it was a French guy. Or was it Sergio? I don't think it was Sergio. No. You still keep in touch with Sergio? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. How's he doing? He's doing great. He's writing music now, and he's actually, he's actually doing it, dude. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. while so on that subject of doing it, why don't you? Because I've never, we haven't even really talked about this. I don't think like. How did you get out to LA? So you're from another country and you came out here by yourself. Do you know which country? Do tell you remember? Them. Tell them, tell everyone. She's from Spain. Yeah, I'm from Spain. She's from Spain. Is in Europe, not in South America. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, well, I got that question before. Mm-hmm. Like some people ask me, oh yeah, um, is it close to what country in South America? And I'm like, oh shit, shall I respond? Or people just don't know leave? geography today. I don't. Well, I don't know where like most shit is, honestly. What's Moshe? Most. <laughs> oh. <laughs> most shit. I don't know where most shit is. I was like, is. I don't know where, where Moshe is either. Moshe. Yeah. Well, I like that. Um, yeah, I'm from Spain. I came here six years ago. I'm going to do six years in July. And um, yeah, here I am. How do you, so I know that you, you've told me, and I know you must get the question with people that are out of, you know, people that are back in Spain or whatever, people that are out of the country. It's, it's like, how the hell do you do, do that? You, do you get from Spain to Los Angeles, Hollywood? And you didn't have, um, you didn't have your social security number or anything, did you? When you first, I didn't have anybody. I didn't have Did you family. move out here with anyone? You didn't move no. out with anyone either. Okay. No, no, no. So tell us. No how family, the fuck? no friends, nothing. There are people that like, are afraid to take that step to come out here that right. want to do it. So, yeah. and you did it and you're doing it. I got people message me from everywhere in the world, like from Argentina, from Colombia, from Spain, from, I don't know, mostly like Spanish speaking countries, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but they, they're just like, how do you do it? What do I need to do? What, yeah. I, how, how, yeah. you know, how do you do this? So how do you do it? And I let me just say really quick, I don't think I even said it, but Macarena is an actress. Hello. She's a very talented actress. Thank she makes you. short. She does everything. She's fucking hustling. Thank you. Hustling all the time. Yeah. All right, now tell us. Well, what's the first step? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's an actual first step that you need to take. It's all about your personal journey and how I don't know. Is I didn't think about it. It was just like when I was eighteen. Well, I wanted to be a doctor when I was little. I remember you. Told I always, that. yeah, I always wanted to be a doctor. My my parents are doctors, and I grew up in a family of doctors. So I, 
I just, by impulse, I was going to be a doctor, right? And then I realized that I wanted to be an actor, that I had so much to express. And I loved it so much. Like, I would just, like, dab other actors in my house or do improv shows to my mom, like, and she would just get headaches from me. And I, and I, I didn't realize that that was, like, acting, the acting in me, the actor in me, you yep. know? I was just, Storyteller. Like, yeah, I was a storyteller. Yep. And I, I didn't know. I just, like... I thought that I was just having fun and yeah. playing. And I mean, acting is playing, right? Yeah, it so, is. Honestly, it's adults playing dress up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I don't know. I just, I, it was difficult when I told my mom, hey, mom, I'm not going to be a doctor. She freaked out. Really? Was, oh, a hundred percent. So she, so were they, did they kind of like want, they were pushing you a little bit to be a doctor? Since I was little. Oh, I've really? been watching wow. surgeries and like, just like everything since I'm, I don't know, since I can remember. Gotcha. You know, yeah, so yeah, I would yeah. just run from the, um, from my little babysitter, um, my little, no, I was a little one. <laughs> From my babysitter, I would just run from them and and get to the clinic that it was under my house. Gotcha. So I would just just like sneak in and like get chairs and get on top of it and just look, you know. So you think from like a very young age, you knew like, or maybe you didn't know, but you knew or you just felt like you didn't want to be a doctor. No, I always wanted to be one. Oh, really? Because that that was, I was the last chance in my family to Mm. have one of us of my siblings be a doctor. Really? Wow. Cuz yeah, I was uh, the small the little the uh, the little one and my other siblings they did different stuff. Gotcha. So I was the last chance in the house and I always enjoyed it a lot. Hmm. So I really thought I was going to be a doctor and then when I had to choose what to do at the age of 18, I was like, "Hey, is this really what I want to do?" So I had like a crisis because I didn't know how to go about it because also I didn't know any actor in any actors in Spain or specifically in Cordoba in the South where I am from. So I don't know. I was like, I'm, I just want to be an actor. And my mom was like, you're crazy. Come on. How, I mean, what? Like an actor, you know? Cause also in my school, I went to a Catholic school. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like the Scottish skirts and all that, like super preppy. Yeah, I went to that school, which is cool. Like my friends forever, they're from since I'm little in that school. I mean, it's, I love it, but. You're you're from a pretty small town in Spain, right? Not, it's like 300,000 people. That's not too small. It's not too small for Spain, but it's still small. Gotcha. So it's not like one of the main, like Madrid or Barcelona or, you know, gotcha, but it's gotcha. still big. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I went to that school and they don't really promote the arts. I didn't oh, really? have really oh, yeah, any Catholic art school? classes yeah. or theater or, so I couldn't really explore it, you know? Yeah. But I just knew I'm this person that when I just go for something, it's just, I need to go for that. Yeah. I, it's weird. It's like, it's I don't It's not weird. Think that's a, that's it. how I, you are that way. You're very like, you just fucking do it. You don't think about it. I just it. do stuff. You just do it. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think about it. I just yeah. like, I want to be an actor. And I know it's not just like some whimsical thing. Yeah. I know it's just, I want to do that. Yeah. I don't know I why. I mean, you've been doing I, it. You're grinding away. A lot of people give up. You know, I know. I know. Quickly. I know. I I love it. Yeah. It's my life. You know, that's what I do 24 seven now. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I, I knew I wanted to be an actor. I don't know why, but I just did it. My mom freaked out and I, she was like, one of my sisters, she was like, Oh, uh, let me call this actress. That's just my friend. She went to my school too. Mm. And she went to, um, to study in London acting. Right. And she wasn't famous yet, but she was kind of doing it. Gotcha. And she was like, Maka, don't just be an actor because, you know, most of my friends are bartenders and, hmm. you know, it kind of sucks. I mean. And she was, she like, was in Spain. She wasn't out here. Yeah. She was in Spain. She was gotcha. in Spain. Yeah. Gotcha. So. How was the acting scene in Spain? Where I mean, you're from? By then, where I am from, yeah. zero. Zero. <laughs> and in Madrid, it's got, now it's getting better. Now Netflix is like really popping oh yeah in spain opening up fucking all over i mean it's just changed the film industry completely 
Yeah. And in Madrid, it's like the main, the main, um, how do you say it? Like the main center. The main for, center yeah. in Europe right now. So gotcha. it's kind of cool. How far were you from Madrid? Uh, if you go by car, it's like three hours and a half of drive. And mm. if you go by train, it's one hour and 40 minutes. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, well, so what I was saying, um, this actress came to my house. Uh, she's now famous, by the way. Wow. Yeah, Macarena Gomez. She came to my house. And Wait, you guys like, have the same name? Yes. That's a sign. Yeah. I mean, we're both from the same city, yeah. South. Macarena is not like a weird name in the south of Spain. It is in the United States. <laughs> I know. It's like... Everyone, are you sick? You must be fucking sick of Sometimes people singing the song. Sometimes I think my name is Jessica. <laughs> really? <laughs> Jess Why Jessica? In Starbucks all the time. It's like, what's your name? If I say Macarena, they ask me to spell it and then <laughs> they make me sing it or dance it. Oh, really? God. Yes. Or they, if not, that. they dance it and that's, that's even worse. God, that's so it's like, because I need to put the face of like, you're doing a great job. You know what I mean? It's you should like, just like mm, flip someone off the next time they do it. Fuck I've you. I've done it, but oh, like you have? hiding, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so that um sometimes I'm Jessica, sometimes I'm Victoria. <laughs> that's my middle name, so I use it God, a lot. Crazy. But yeah, well, so she came to my place gotcha. and um she talked me kind of out of it a little bit. She was like, Oh, I have my parents are doctors and they support me a little bit and I have this, but my friends are all bartending everywhere and they're so sick of it and blah blah blah. And so she was like, you should study something that is kind of related to it, but it's, mm. you get the knowledge of the entertainment industry, but it's not just acting. You have like a plan B, right? It's good advice. I would right. say. So it was great. So I was like, okay, so, um, I'll study like producing and all that. Cool. I hated my life for <laughs> like three years and a half of my career. The wow. first ones, it was, sorry, but it was boring as fuck like to me i didn't i the first years was like it was in common with journalism advertising and communications and what i studied was communications so it was boring to me and then the last two years it was all like you know um practicing stuff yeah, and yeah. so that was the fun was that part. still in spain yeah so gotcha. that was in madrid so i so well so magarna told me uh, you, I should do something else and you should do something else too besides acting which is great but is not as stable yeah, and, blah, yeah. blah, blah. and then like a year after I think she made it and she started like being one of the leads in this TV show um, for Telecinco that is like one of the main gotcha. um, networks That's cool. in Spain So and now she's known and she's doing great That's she's awesome. amazing yeah so, I mean, I was there, like she was being famous and I was there starting communications yeah. being like, okay, I need to get it done. So my mom is happy. Yeah. But I went to this university, the school that allowed me in the fourth, in the fourth year of the, you know, the bachelor's thing, um, to came, to come to LA. Oh, so I for an internship. Gotcha. So I was like, I'll go to that school because I really wanted to come to LA I don't know why I was just curious I didn't want to be an actor in Spain nothing wrong with it but I my dream was in LA yeah, I, I mean it's where it is I mean it's where I don't know why I always happens, like you know? the difficult path of yeah. everything and I don't know if this is the difficult path or not but to me it was the most complicated I mean moving to another fucking country I admire yeah. that that you just I mean, so many people never <laughs> leave their fucking hometown. You know yeah. what I mean? Or their I know house. friends back back in Texas in the small town I'm from that never fucking left. They and they stayed with up. their parents forever. Yeah, you know. And they, yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think probably. I mean, here's my psychoanalysis of you. That I would say you you like to seek the challenges because that's how you fucking grow. You know, yeah. it's how you like challenge yourself and grow. And, and I don't you know do if that. I, did grow or not you've I grown mean, since we fucking met i just i just like i don't think about all that stuff i just yeah. you go do. and you do, just it. do it you know i just do it i don't yeah. like yeah i don't think too much no. about things You're the, you and sense. i are the complete opposite yeah i'm a doer i think way too i'm much. not a thinker i'm a yeah. doer and i just jump to the pool and that's it it's done i crack my head well i did it you yeah. know i mean that was the only alternative I had or something yeah, yeah, yeah. that I considered, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or 
I don't know if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's really interesting. I think it's admirable. I think pe- there needs to be people that are, you know, I think it's a, it's a, a good quality to not, Very. to like just take the fucking leap. You know, it's hard. A lot of people just don't get that. They don't understand that. I don't understand know? myself after I jump. You know yeah. what I mean? I just do it. And then I'm like, why the heck did I do this? Yeah. You know, and even if it's positive or negative, the jump, the jump, it doesn't matter. I, I'm like, I don't understand, no. but I just did it. And I always do things that scare me. Always. Every time something scares me, I go ahead and do it. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, cause I don't like, I don't like being afraid of things. So I don't know. Well, let me finish with the You were talking Spanish about, thing. you were talking so about internship. So I came internship. here for an internship in my fourth year. And um, I went to Align Entertainment. That is an agency. Well, it's a management company for actors, for comedians. There's a few uh, big names in that agency. And it was great. And I was like, I love this. Um, my English was really bad. Let me tell you that. God, your English has gotten so much better. I know. It's wild. <laughs> you were like, I remember when we Man. met, you were like, Macarena. I don't understand you. Really? What are you saying? And you were saying it with my accent, really? like a little bit like, I was like, this was asshole. Kind of an asshole. Man. Yeah, like a big asshole, but it's okay, you know? Sorry. But yeah, no, it's fine. I speak two languages, you know? Yeah. No, <laughs> no so, um, so yeah, so I came here my fourth year. I did an internship for a month and a half or two months. I don't remember. At this agency, I had so much fun and I was like, I'm just... They wanted to hire me and everything because it was fun. I was kind of like handling the production part of the agency. They started doing sketches for their actors and everything. So I I got to buy the material and everything they needed. I was editing too. And I was just like helping them out with nice. all the production part. So it was really cool. And um, they wanted me to stay. And I was like, no, I need to go back. I need to finish my last year of school. And then I'll probably come back. That was my idea. But gotcha. I didn't know if it could happen, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, I went back to Spain. I finished. And one month after I was done, I was here again. God. Wow. And the cool part, well, my English wasn't good. Like I said, I didn't even know what an audition was. I thought it was casting because it's Mm. already an English word. In Spain, you say casting. Oh, really? Say casting. Same thing for audition? Yeah. but So I thought... You say, I have a casting, not I have an audition. I see. So I was like, wow, the actors go in like an actual auditorium and they read for the people they're sitting there. It was weird. So I was like, oh, you have an audition. That's interesting. And I was thinking, do I actually want to do auditions? Like, it was so weird. And I was like, oh, shit, that's just casting, like an audition. That's it. So, yeah. So I had a lot of like little issues with the language and... um, yeah. So what's that joke? Uh, just a tangent. That joke. You have a joke that you talk about with some word. I listen to it where you stand up stuff. Oh yeah. What yeah. is that? That's so funny. Uh, I have a lot, but the language. By stuff, the way, right? Macarena is a stand up comedian too. Yeah. Um, I don't know which one. Which one are you talking about? I don't about? remember. I'm sorry. I oh, remember. the one that. Yeah. I think it has yeah, something yeah. to do with taking a shit or something. Oh my god, no! <laughs> something like <laughs> we that. We said we were not going to talk about shitting in the podcast. Did we? I didn't know we said. Yeah, that. we said that. I don't think we said that. I was not going to use your restroom, remember? Because you have no ventilation. That's fine. <laughs> you can if you need no, to I'm go kidding. take a shit. I don't do any it. of that stuff. She's a woman. She doesn't do that. Yeah, I just shit flowers. <laughs> So, um, what was I saying? You were talking about your process after you left and then you came back after a month. Oh yeah. So I came back to LA. I found that amazing. Well, I came to Texas first oh. because my brother is in Texas. I didn't know that. He lives in Houston. You've never told me that. Yeah, I did tell you, but you Maybe. just don't listen. So I don't he, remember. Come no. on. I listen. I'm a good listener. It's true. It's true. It's true. Sorry. Yeah, it's true. He's in Actually, he's actually the best listener I know. You mean that? Yes. That's a really nice compliment. Yeah. I appreciate that. People don't fucking listen nowadays. Very true. Yeah. So, well, yeah, so I went to Texas, to Houston for like a week or so. I didn't even have an apartment uh, in oh. LA yet because mm. I didn't know how to find it. I, didn't know. I, wouldn't, I don't know. I'm just like, I get the ticket, I go, I'll figure it out, right? So... I found this place I called from my brother's phone and everything, the June house. June house. 
And um, so I found it. I didn't have social security. I didn't have um, credit. I didn't have money. I didn't have <laughs> nothing. Um, you didn't have. I you, just had myself. And you didn't have. A, you didn't come out here with a friend. No, nothing like that. No, God, no. That's so. Awesome. We found the June house and I was like, okay, $500. I have to share a room with three more people and two guys. And I'm one of the girls in the, in that small room. It's okay. It's a house. We have a porch. It's cool. Yeah. So I'm doing it and I'm moving to Hollywood. Mm. So God, yeah, it's I wild arrived. thinking back to those times, the stories from the June house. I don't think I would do it now. Yeah. Oh, well, that's part of like it takes that willingness to go through that kind of shit to like get started. And right. now that you're a little bit older, it's like, man, looking back. I mean, I'm not that old. No. Yeah, but... you were making fun of me earlier. <laughs> no. So what else? So yeah, so I moved to that house and I just it was one of the best times actually of of my life. Right, it was yeah. it was great. It was everything was fresh. I remember I didn't even have a car. I was uh, going with my skateboard everywhere. Yeah. You remember that? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And I was like, Carl, I'm here. I don't know how to get here. Would you pick me up or something? <laughs> yeah. And you had God. that big truck. And we would go everywhere singing Creep. My God. Creep. Do you Creep. remember? We singing that. We would just All kinds yell of songs. It. Listening to dubstep. Right, right, I have right, a very right. vivid memory of us <laughs> driving from the June house to Santa Monica Beach. Right. And we were listening to like fucking loud dubstep the whole time. Why did you reason. always play music super loud? I thought you had a mental issue. Oh, Jesus. I really thought so. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was to the max. Yeah. And it was, it was bad. I mean, I. <laughs> I probably fucked up your hearing. Probably. I, do, I don't know. I just, it's a, it's way more intense listening to music loud. That's why I like it. You're an intense it. person overall. And yeah. that, yeah, that That's was. That's why. It yeah. make, if you feel it more when it's turned up all the way. I know, My but, uh, hearing is probably fucked. I'll admit it. Probably. I have a, I have trouble hearing sometimes. People, I wear these headphones because I can't fucking hear anything. Not really. <laughs> I actually like wearing them. But. Yeah, I hear the echo. Do you, how are you liking the headphones, by it's the way? It's kind of cool, actually. I like how my voice sounds. It's good. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's not narcissistic at all. No. <laughs> yeah so um so what else so we moved to the june house and i was there before you you were there before me yeah and then you arrived sergio was there already right no i don't already? think so or, was he no oh, he came no, after no, he came after right and then yeah it was it was amazing I, it's so nostalgic just thinking back to that it almost feels like a different life honestly and you know what's interesting a lot of the people that i met and that I made friends with since the beginning of my journey in LA. There's not that many left. People has moved back. And they say that this city is like a rotatory city. Every three years, three years and a half, people, there's like a new wave of people that come here and leave. And yeah, I can see that. I don't have that many original friends from that first year. Yeah. Not that many, honestly. Same here, honestly. It's so weird. You're the only one. Of friends when I wow. first moved here. I mean, you didn't have that many friends. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> no, it's true. Remember, no, God, Playhouse West. Man. Yeah. You, you had friends there, a oh, few. Yeah. yeah, but none of them now. I don't even know what any of those people are doing. Well, some, right? No, not me. I have not kept in touch with any of them. Not even one? Nope. The uncle? Uncle? What are you talking about? <laughs> You might want to edit this. It's okay. No, it's, uh, we don't have to edit. Who are you talking about? Oh, no, it's about? okay. No, um, uh, Bo's ankle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, he of was, course. You met. Oh, of course. Arnold. Yeah. yeah. Arnold. My, daughter's, Arnold. my daughter's uncle. Right. Yeah. He's the only one. And That's he was it. from Playhouse. He was from Playhouse. I just don't. That's I, crazy. For some reason, I don't consider that because he, you know, he wasn't there long and, you know, right. he kind of left and, you know. He got kicked out. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> the shit that ha went down at Playhouse. God, think about how long it was ago so that was. It was so fucking intense. I get it. It's like, you were taking it too seriously. Me? The drama. Yeah, it's like... Really? I mean, it's cool, but it's like, you're still acting, you know? Like, and people were freaking out. I was trying you. not to act. <laughs> I was trying to be real. Right, I know, but... That's uh, why, I, I guess that's probably why I don't really act now, because it just, I don't know. It, it, I can't, I don't feel like I can... It's so weird, because in acting, you're supposed to be real, right? But the play, but Playhouse like fucked up my 
view of acting for some reason. It made me not trust, you know? Wow. Yeah. I don't Interesting. Know. You went all the way through, though. I did. You got to advanced. Yeah. You left in the beginning, right? I left in the beginning. Shit. Yeah. I went to like all the main ones, all the main little acting studios. None yeah. of them. None resonate. of them really. No. Ivana Chubbuck was pretty cool. Yeah, I liked it. Have you done Ivana Chubbuck? I haven't. No. I've tried a lot of them too. Yeah, you were telling, I mean, what? You, not that long ago, you were telling me about this place that you were going to and the way that you Which memorize way? scripts. It was fucking cool. Oh, I left. It sounded really interesting. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was too much. It was the Imagine Life. I loved it. I mean, it was really good, but it required so much time. And I felt like I was becoming a professional student instead of a yeah. like, professional actor. <laughs> yeah. So it was, I mean, in order for you to do a good job in that class, you need to dedicate a long time every day. Yeah. It's like, I don't have that. I'd rather learn something else, record it, and do something that people are actually going to see it yeah. and that I can share. It and I don't know. Um, so I left that place, and I'm just focusing right now in comedy. Yeah, that's so cool. I didn't know you yeah. were like putting all your focus on comedy. 100%. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I totally, you are, you're that kind of person. It takes like, to be a stand-up comedian from what I listen to and hear people talk about, it's fucking like, you got to have some balls. Yeah. You got to have balls. And you got to have also discipline hmm. because, I mean, you know, you're a, writer, you're a writer too. Um, sitting and write when you have a trillion other things to do and it's it's so difficult to find the time. And as a stand-up, you need to sit down and write, right? Yeah. And um, that's the most difficult part for me and also hitting open mics when it's like, Maybe 10 p.m. You get out of your house at 9:30 at nine at night, yeah. and you just go to this club, and um, people might be drunk already, you know. And like, it must be rough. Every be fucking standing up every in front stand of a up, drunk no, people. No, what is rough is to stand up to do stand up in front of other comedians. Oh, ooh, that's that's where you. That's what I've heard. That's where you need where you need your self confidence and discipline to keep going back to those clubs to try out your jokes, because um, yeah, like if if a, if you hear a. <laughs> From a stand-up, then it's like it's gonna be an actual big laugh yeah. in a in a in a club. Yeah, yeah. You why know? why are other stand-up comedians like that? They're so harsh. It's harsh, yeah. It's like oh, it's just not fucking funny. I'm funnier. How long yeah. has it been now that you've like kind of decided to really focus on stand-up? Well, it's like, I mean, my life is weird. You know, it's like I don't know if I already mentioned that my first audition ever in LA, I booked it. Mm, it no. was for a play and it was amazing. So every time I do something the first time is huge. And then it vanishes down a little bit and then I pick it up again and I do it. And then is where I need the self-discipline and to keep going and yeah. push myself in the hardest times Yeah, because well, yeah, so I booked that one, right? And then my first stand-up show ever, or I, this is going to sound really weird, but before uh, performing at the comedy store, I never did any open mic, any, oh, really? nothing. Wow. I just, I just went for it. So I, I did a, I, I performed at the comedy store at the belly room. It was a tiny room, but it's super cool. I mean, it's a comedy, comedy store. store yeah, it's, uh, it's fucking. So it was amazing. I was like, well, if I bomb, I bomb. Whatever. Yeah. Who cares? I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And yeah. I did it. And it was super fun. People laughed so much. I was like, I don't get it, but let's just keep doing it. And yeah. then I had like a personal crisis with like relationships and stuff. And I, and I kind of like, I couldn't find the comedy in me. Mm -hmm. At that time, mm -hmm. I guess the comedy comes after the drama, but not during not the drama during the is drama. happening. Yeah. So now I'm finding the comedy in all the drama that yeah. I had, right? And now I'm back on stage and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm working hard, dude. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just having fun with it. I'm 
if I bomb, I bomb and it's cool. And if nobody laughs, I leave the stage doing this in the back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's the attitude Something to have. Something that helps me. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like, but, but usually it's, it's cool. And then I'm doing a lot of improv too. Like um, acting improv stuff? Yeah, nice. we perform, we've been performing at different clubs. Like we did a show this week at the clubhouse. We're having one on Monday in Second City. Uh, we did one uh, last week at um, UCB. Nice. Inner Sanctum. What about any like stand up stuff coming up? I want to see you. I haven't actually gone to see you. I haven't seen. I know. Seen videos. I know, I know. Well, I didn't say that. What do you mean? That's private. You can't record. Okay, sure. <laughs> no, it was a sound, right? You did mm. sound. No, I saw a video. Like it was sound, s- right? What do you mean it was sound? It was just an audio. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. So. Yeah, it was. Right. I, see. Yeah, yeah. I remember now. It yeah. Was just sound. <laughs> so yeah, right. so um, that and uh, what else? So I I'm doing a lot of. I have an improv troupe, which is really cool. What is that? Um, I had one before, like two years ago. It was Crispy Rice. And now I'm with a bilingual troupe. Oh, so now we it. perform. It depends on the audience. If it's like Spanish kind of audience, then we do it in Spanish. Gotcha. If it's like an all-American or different nationalities, we just do it in English. What? How do you go about... I mean, I, I never did improv at all when I was doing acting. Like, it's how do super you? Fun. How do you? Yeah. What is what is the initial thing with improv? Like, how do you start if you're doing a performance? Is there like some theme that you have to start with, or it what? Depends. Like, we had one show that they played a telenovela hmm. before, and then oh, we had to base a show on that. Gotcha. But it can be just like the first scene. It depends on what kind of show. If it's like a Harold or a montage, or I see. you know, so you go about it differently. It seems but like you like. The spontan you're like a spontaneous person. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense that you were yeah. doing stand up comedy, you're doing improv. Yeah, it's it's definitely super fun because also you just have to go. Yeah. Just show up. That's yeah. it. That's scary. A lot of people can't do that shit. I I started well, first of all, like you all know, my first language is not English, right? So doing comedy in a different language is fucking challenging oh yeah because you have the inside jokes from the country that you're like oh what are they talking about or they talk about this presence that you have no idea about yeah. who they fucked and why are they making love with them? <laughs> you know what I mean? or why you know you just see the obvious stuff but not actual things that happened like yeah. history stuff about them or their story or you have to actually go ahead and study it too in order to understand the cultural jokes and and everything, right? So um, I started acting with you, right? Mm-hmm. I started doing like drama and because I wanted to be a serious actor and yeah. I wanted to be taken seriously, right? And then I I was like, what scares me? I was like, uh, besides singing at karaoke, um, <laughs> singing at karaoke. Yeah, that's what I, I have to really like be like, just do it. And then when I'm doing it, I love it. But the time, the moment that you're putting your name down in the paper, I get tachycardic. It's like you I sing get, well. Huh? Are you a good singer? I love singing. I haven't heard you sing ever. I don't oh, think. Oh, you probably won't ever. No, I'll do it next. Yeah, time. you do karaoke, but you won't sing. I want to. No, hear. I have to. I have to. That's my next thing. I want to do improvanda. That <clears throat> is singing, doing improv. Oh wow! Yeah, I actually saw some YouTube video of people doing an improv. It was a improv musical. Right, improvanda is the same, but that's like in Spanish. Can't even it's like imagine. Improv band, yeah. improv musical, or gotcha. yeah. So that's in my bucket list. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so ah, la, 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 la. Uh, so I wanted to be taken seriously, and then I was like, okay, what scares me? I was like, comedy, improv, not having a script, not knowing what I'm gonna say, not having everything planned in my head, yeah. not like, and it's actually the opposite of me, right? But yeah. that scared me because mm. it's like, I don't want to fail. Yeah, of course. Although you can fail with the script. Yeah. Hard. But well, what do you, what is harder to you now that you've been doing both? Is improv and stand up comedy harder than like getting a script and analyzing a script? Improv and trying is to, the hardest. It's the hardest. Hmm. Oh, well, it depends how you see it because 
when you're doing improv, you just need to read the mind, the 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 collective mind of your team, gotcha. and build go the same direction. Um, so that's hard. When you're working with a script, you need to understand what the writer is trying to say and the tone of the show and what net network or what is it going to be on. And so yeah. you understand. Yeah, yeah. Just different. What you need to do. I guess right? they're both hard in their own way, right? Right, right. So, and then with stand up, you need to read your audience. God, stand up. That I can't. Uh, well, can I ask you, do you sit down and how do you write your stuff? I'm still, I'm still. Because mm, that's like with that. fucking crazy to write stand up comedy. You know, like I that's usually, a crazy beast to tackle. It's, it's difficult because it's like writing a script. You need to write it with, but it's different because you don't put all the annotations of like no. action. No. You just have it in the, in what you're saying kind yeah. of. And then you know you're doing that or that other thing. There isn't, it, uh, I, there isn't like a, well, I guess there has to be a structure. It has to be very right? conversational and very, very fresh. Yeah. In that sense, like it cannot be like, um, it I can't feel like super practiced, it right? Can't, very no. like you've done it a no, million times. The best is when it is spontaneous and usually I don't write it. That's, that's weird too. Like you, I should, and maybe if I keep doing it and I start going to, like huge clubs and I start touring and everything, then I'll probably have to fucking write it, right? Maybe because not. there's a lot of material. You never know. The thing is like you record it and you can say the same joke in different clubs and you get sometimes laughs at different parts yeah. or you say the same sentence but in a different way and you can get a lot of laughs or zero laughs. Yeah. That's what's f- crazy about it, right? Right. So that's so it's good to record it and then you probably just write it the way it worked best. Mm. But sometimes like I said if you're doing it at open mics with other comedians, you're not probably going to get a lot of um feedback. Yeah. of your stand up because yeah. They're not very like supportive, hundred yeah. percent. That's what I've you know? heard. Joe Rogan is a huge. I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, he talks about that all the time. How fucking brutal it it's is. Brutal. It's doing stand up in front of other comedians. And the best thing is just like you do it. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Don't stay talking to other people. So, so are you doing? You're like doing clubs and stuff right now. I'm just hitting open mics right now. So I'm just testing stuff. I'm trying out different things. I'm trying to. Figured out my voice and my stand-up persona. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, straightforward, you know, in life and everything. And with my stand-up, I'm pretty straightforward too. So I'm just trying to find a way of putting it down. Capturing your personality. Capturing everything together, you know? So yeah, so... You want a shot? Most no. No. Most of the times, I just like I, I have an idea of what I want to talk about, and I improvise on a stage, and I'm like, "Fuck it, I don't care if it hits. It hits. It's just an open mind." Oh, that's that's crazy. That's what you do. You like improvise on stage. And yeah, just kinda... I just know the topics wow. or the subjects that I'm going to talk about, and then um, I just say it and I mm. talk about it. That's an interesting way to go about it. It's like yeah. doing it for the first time like that, getting feedback and then going from there. I usually do. I realize that I do more like observational stand up. Mm. That is about like cultural shock yeah, and yeah. things that even though I've been here for six years, there's still things that call my attention. But I'm pretty sure that if I started doing this first year that I got here, I would have gotten so much more material because now I'm used to things that are not actually normal to me. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, that's normal. And I it doesn't really resonate. Yeah, yeah. And I have to really pay attention to the things to be like, that's actually not normal. Like yeah. I should talk about that, you yeah. know? That's or, awesome. I mean, I think that's a big, that's such a good quality to have to be a stand-up comedian. I think like the best stand-up comedians seem like they... They are very aware and they can make observations of shit oh, that people yeah. don't talk about. But that, make you know, funny. you know, it was so difficult for me to separate my stand up life and my actual Macarena everyday person. Cause now, since I've been doing it more often, like now I try to hit like at least 
two or three open mics per week. I okay. try some weeks, I hit one. Some other weeks, I can't hit any, but I try to do at least two. Yeah. Um, so I, I forget that I have to be like a little bit careful when I'm on stage. Just be Macarena. Oh, I see. When I'm, I mean, I'm Macarena on stage, but yeah. like in my day to day life, I just call out things like this. Yeah. On people. Yeah. Now. I, oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying like in your in your normal day to day life. Yes. You like doing stand up has almost made it like. You're, yes. You I was at Trader Joe's like, and this guy was uh, he was a cashier and I was just like, oh hey, how are you doing? And this and that, you know, I talked to everybody. So I was talking to him and he was like, oh, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Um, um, would you like a bag? And I'm like. Oh shit, you party hard last night, blah, blah, blah. And I keep talking to him and he's like, he turns like a little white and then he goes like, no, I have an illness. This is my actual voice. I uh -oh. can't. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm sorry. You know, like, I mean, I'm, I just, you know, I, 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 I just talk too much and this and that. He was like, I don't know. It's fine. I, I get this all the time. You know, wow. my ex didn't know where to hide. You know, he was like, oh shit, why the fuck are you doing this? Like, why do you have to call on things all the time? I, that's, I love that about you, honestly. I know, but it's like, and that I was red. I felt my face was like getting like inflammated or something. I felt yeah. like I was getting I see really pumped. I love that about you. I and think that's then, what it takes to be a comedian. Uh, but it was too much. I was like, okay, you need to shut the fuck up, you know? And then instead of going back and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, I just kept going because I don't know how to stop it. Yeah. Because I, and I'm, oh, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, I make fun of myself too all the time. That's why I just like talk about things and talk about people and tell people things. But I'm so, you know, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. And I kept going. And then my ex was just like, let's fucking go. Gone. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. I don't know. See, I enjoy that shit. <laughs> I, I would that's the kind of that authenticity that you have is what I like you know I think that's a good thing I don't oh think God. it's something to be careful about I think that's something that's good because so many people nowadays aren't like it's that. crazy like uh, one time I was I was in a in an event in Spain and there was like it was like a first communion or something like that and there were so many kids going up the stairs and there was this one that was different of the rest but I saw it as a group of people, like as a group of kids. And I, it was actually, it was, so he, he, the thing is like he was going up and he was like going up really quick really, really cute. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. You're so cute. And then he goes like, son of a bitch. He was a dwarf. Uh -oh. And I thought it was a little kid because he was going up the stairs with all of them all together. Gotcha. But he was just a little behind, but I thought he was just, like a little bit smaller in age or something. Yeah. And he was, and he was like, son of a bitch with like this deep voice in Spanish. I was like, oh shit. And I was like, oh, so I kept walking. You know, it's like, that's yeah. a problem. That's like a comedian issue that I need to learn how to separate. I see. Yeah. Mm. And these are, these are stories that would be good to do. So I know. I just make like, a joke out of this stuff. I know. It's just like, I, I, I haven't like, I don't have, I have a bunch of material. I just need to organize it like a little bit more. I have like a set right now, like maybe a seven minute set or something. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I think I think you're, I totally think you doing stand-up comedy is, is awesome. I Thank totally you. can see that, like you doing that and being successful and doing something with it. Thank you. Fits your personality. You know? I just have fun with it. I don't yeah. care. And that was, oh, going back to the comedy, I feel like we've, we're all over. We're things. all like, over. It's good. Yeah, so the... I was afraid of doing comedy and then I just, I did improv, right? Because that was like what was available to me at Playhouse actually it started. Oh, really? With Jim Neve, yeah. So I started doing comedy, like improv, and then I got Troupe, Crispy Rice. I performed in, we performed in different shows and different um, venues uh, and uh, here in LA. And then I was like, what scares me? I was like, oh, maybe stand up. But I was like, but I think I would be a lot better at it because it's personal. And if they give me a suggestion in improv of like Ohio, 
Yeah. I'm not from here. I don't know what the fuck is in Ohio. Yeah. Like Ohio, Idaho. I don't know. Like tell me New York, San Francisco or LA. But if yeah. you give me uh, a, a city that I've never been and I don't know anything about, I just think of potatoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> I don't know wow. why. It's like, That's hilarious. I would start like, you know, like doing like, um, <laughs> trying to get potatoes out of the God, dirt, you know, hilarious. or that is funny. <laughs> I was like, potatoes, it's just Jesus. do potatoes. So <laughs> it was, it felt a little superficial <laughs> to me. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, maybe stand up is my thing because I can actually talk about whatever I fucking You enjoy want. it, right though? Because that's the thing. If you feel like that's yeah. you're in your element and you enjoy it, that's all that matters. Yeah, I mean, I still do improv and I'm going to keep doing it because it's super fun and and it's just like I I go with it and if it's yeah. potatoes, it's potatoes, you know? And it's just like I accept it and embrace, I embrace it and I play. Yeah. That's what I do. That's awesome. Yeah. I still want to get back to like how the fuck you came, you moved out here the way that you did. Like if, like what is advice? Maybe that's a way to ask you. Like what's advice that you would get someone? Cause I know you get, you, you know, people ask you that. I think everybody's path is very different. Yeah. I don't know how to give advice. I would say, no, don't ever take advice from anyone. <laughs> That's what I can say that I'm most confident about my advice. Because if you hear a lot of people's advice, you get really confused. Yeah, and you true. don't end up doing what you actually want to do and you're influenced. We were talking about that with like, don't read comments when you put shit right, online because right. it can fuck up the way you think about yourself. And yeah. It disturbs it. That's really good. That's good advice. Image. So my advice is to not take advice. And maybe if, you know, if like something specific that you don't know and all that, then it's okay. But not like general advice. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Just uh, There is no, there is no like right way. Right. You know? No. It's different. I would just say work your ass out and... If you don't have Sundays, it's okay. For seven years, 10 years, it's okay. If you don't have Mondays, it's okay. If you don't have Saturdays free, it's okay. Yeah. Like, just fucking do it. If that's what you want to do, then if you don't want to do it, then you'll have Sundays, you have Saturdays, and enjoy your life. <laughs> but you're probably not going to make it. Yeah, hard. That's hard, how hard. I think. Oh, yeah. I'm with like, you. And it's cool. Like, sometimes, okay, take like a few days off and just like turn off the phone and go to the beach and, or just one day. But that day is when your manager calls you for an audition. Yeah. So I don't recommend it to turn it off. But um, just, you know, take care of yourself. Go with your flow. Go with whatever comes up in your head and... That might be what you need to do, you know. That's that's what I that's what I've been following my my whole life. That's my religion. Yeah. Just you don't want to do that. That scares you, but you're thinking about that, so just fucking do it. That's, if not, you wouldn't be thinking about that. That's yeah. I mean, that's and there's always you can always go back. Yeah, you know, I'm not afraid of anything because. I'm afraid of not trying things and thinking I should have done that before. So I just do things and if they don't work out or I know I can always go back to Spain if I get sick of this and I start hating everybody in LA and I start hating everything that I do and I start hating paying so much fucking rent every month or whatever, you know, I can always go back to Spain to my mom's house, you know, that's always going to be there for me. Yeah. But so I know I have that. That's a security that I have that a lot of people probably don't have. So maybe that's why I'm not as scared. Maybe, I don't know. I think I just think what you're saying is like, I, I honestly think that that's like very important with anything, not just acting, not just doing stand-up, not just whatever, but that approach of thinking about life in terms of like, go for the shit you want to do rather than regretting it. Like right. regret is such a fucking Who horrible cares? thing. Like, I, I might not... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next month. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to still be here. I don't know if I'm going to be doing shows. And I don't know if, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to do in like next Friday. I don't know what I'm going to do next Friday. Like I kind of have like a plan and everything and I'm 
very organized with my agenda and all that. But I honestly, things can go a different way completely, and yeah. I can just like change everything because that's me, right? Yeah. So I really don't know, and I don't like planning things that much. It's just like doing them, and if it takes too long to do it, then I I get bored. Yeah. So I just like I rather jump. That's why it's like oh, uh, you go to like audition. Okay, I'm gonna book it. Book it. You know, and then um, uh, you are gonna do stand up. Okay, you're gonna start at the comedy store. You know, it's like yeah. it's it's kind of pretentious what I'm saying, but at the same time, that's me. I'm not patient. I'm I don't not, think it's pretentious. I don't have, but I don't have any patience. Yeah. It's like I, I'm a go getter. I need to get this done. I do it. Yeah. Like you need to be sag, you are sag. You need to be this, you're that. Like, you know, it's it's just like the way I manage my life. Yeah. I, I didn't even speak English when I booked that role, and that was because they liked my essence. They liked. It wasn't like a huge role, like the theater one that I booked. All right. Um, maybe you want to hear what's. Are going you gonna on? delete the blah blah blah? blah. No. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> That's horrible. It's all going. They're gonna be there. like, "How is she fucking doing stand up if she cannot even talk?" You're talking. You, this is a live <laughs> podcast. You're doing great. I'm so tired. You're doing great. Um. All right, we're recording. Sorry about the te technical difficulty, everyone. Um, I was just, you know, actually, I was just curious. You said something a second ago that I thought it's worth delving into a little bit more because it's ahead. it's good. Like it really is good advice to not like the best advice is don't listen to people's advice. Yeah, I mean, just listen to whoever you actually admire and somebody that is actually doing it, but don't listen to people that are not in the industry or that they're trying to give you life advice about what you're doing and everything because. It's going to just confuse you so yeah. much and you're not going to be able to listen to your own voice if you're listening to so many voices. Yeah, that's that what you're saying. Sense. You were saying that like you've listened to people's advice and it made you confused. And then when you realized, fuck this, I'm not going to listen to someone that you like started getting clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just listen to people that I actually think that they know well what they're doing yeah. and is not is never criticism. It's always like, okay, now you should, you should do this and now that because actually I need some guidance. I'm, you course. cannot do this by yourself. You need support, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, having your mom's support that doesn't know anything about this industry is, is great. But you also need yeah. professional support, right? Yeah. And sometimes your own manager is, which is, she's great, but like, I mean, she's busy. Yeah. So she doesn't have time to talk to me every time I have like a, uh, existential question yeah, about yeah. everything that I'm doing, right? And so you need other people, like other mentors and people that actually uh, are doing this too and they want to be that person that helps you out, yeah. you know? That's, that's I think, pretty important to, for Besides people to think about. Besides the person that makes the dollar from yeah. you. And you hear that a lot too. A lot of people say, find mentor, find someone. Because that's a different thing, like... An actual mentor is someone that wants to help and give you that is real, excited about what you're doing. Yeah, that is pushing that's you. That's the that difference. Is, that's the difference. Because, um, but how? Your, your how? Reps. Let me ask you this: because oh, yeah. fucking Los Angeles, is it not hard? <laughs> like, isn't that hard? I've experienced a lot of like really materialistic people that yeah. don't. They don't care to help you. It's it's an ego thing. That's yeah. it's all over the place here. You know what? It's a little bit of everything. Yeah. I would say. Because people actually want to help out here, I feel. You know, it's, I feel like every time I tried to talk to someone in Spain that is in this industry, not many. I obviously I have some that they're like, yes, what are you doing? I would love to help you with this or would love to blah, blah, blah. But here is different. People get more involved. Hmm. Maybe it's ego. Maybe they think that they're super cool and they are like ready to give you advice. It might be that. Or it might just be self. People are very giving here too. And they're very nice. And some are... Maybe you've just gotten lucky. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Like I would say 
at the beginning, I thought everybody was fake, honestly, because people are so nice. Like, oh, you look so pretty. I love your hair. And it's yeah. like, my hair is full of shit today. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about my yeah. hair, you know? But I was like, no, maybe she just meant my hair color. And actually, if you talk to her again, she was referring to your hair color, not yeah. to, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, people compliment here a lot and is usually sometimes is fake but a lot of the times is it's real like people are very people can be very materialistic but they can also be very deep there's no midpoint i think there's yeah. no you know yeah and um I see what you're saying you just need to really hear what they're trying to say not just hear the words and If you think they're superficial, maybe there's something that you need to listen deeper to in order to understand that person, no. why they're saying it, or and not stay as materialistic as you are judging them. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what I was about to say. Is To me, it sounds like it's a perception thing. It's a perception. It's, it's your just, perception. Right, it's how you take things. Yeah. And I'm always, I'm a very positive person. Like, I'm, I'm, Obviously, I have days that I'm like, I just want to stay in bed. I don't want to get up and I hate my life and I want to go back to Spain. And I just like, what am I doing here? You know, yeah. I have those days too. But usually I'm super positive and I'm very, I love meeting people. I love talking to different people, getting to know their experience. And I'm very curious yeah. and I enjoy people. I like people. I'm a, I, I love people, yeah. you know? So... I always try to get the positive out of everything. Even if I have a friend that is fucking annoying and is just doing this. And I'm like, I'm like oh, maybe I have this to understand this part of myself. Mm -hmm. I have this friend to understand this part of myself. Maybe it's patience. Yeah. Maybe is I don't know. Uh, I need to be stronger and not be affected by people. So I'm going to practice it with this person yeah. that is being fucking annoying. Why do you think, just... uh, let me ask you why I find that I find this topic really interesting getting into like this more philosophy, like the psychology. Yeah. Why, why do you think you're that way? Oh, uh, I don't know. My mom is super positive too. Um, I can be like, mom, I think I, I'm super dramatic, right? So I could be like, mom, I think I have depression. I think I have depression. I'm super, by the way, I'm not making fun of depression or anything, but sometimes I think I have, you oh, know, yeah. because I'm very hypochondriac sometimes. Yeah. And I can, I think I have everything when I have a down day. So I can be like, I have depression. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just like super sad. Everything is bad. And when I, this is true that when something bad happens to me, All the other bad things around, they oh, yeah. add up yeah. and it becomes like this big shit ball that I don't know how to get out of it. And yeah. I don't even know why the reason why I got depressed because everything comes oh, together. Yeah. That's how it is. It's right? perception, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. So it's like I when that happens to me. It's difficult and I'm like, mom, I'm this and that. And then she's the person that she doesn't even listen to me about that. She's like, she's like, come on, you blah, blah, blah. And that makes me really upset because it's like, come on, we all have issues and I might having I might be having like a really bad day and I need yeah. you to connect with me. I need you to empathize with me. I need you to understand me that I might not be like this happy person every day, you yeah. know? And she's like, I know, but you'll get out of it. I know you are this and that. And so my mom is like my number one um, source of energy. She's always like, she always sees the positive and she always taught me to see the positive in things, even though it can be something bad, yeah. like a breakup or something like that. I yeah. always end up seeing the positive part of it yeah. and not, not focusing on the negatives or the, I hate this person. No, I'm always like, well... I love this person and this is why it happened now. Because if we probably stayed together for longer, we were going to end up hating each other or killing each other or, you know, so it's like I always like stay with everything positive, you yeah. know? I mean, that's definitely something that I remember with you from the very beginning. <laughs> very, very optimistic and positive. Yeah, it How do seems you... unrealistic, but it's not. Like I'm very realistic with myself. Yeah. But then I just like push it for like I, I, I push 
yeah myself to not be in that bubble of like uh, internal <laughs> um you know closeness yeah. of um the present really bad no yeah. i just like okay you're having a bad day it's okay to have a bad day okay get the fuck out of the house yeah go see the sunlight um you know go get a coffee yeah breathe meditate go out with your dogs take them to a park tomorrow will be another day you'll be fine yeah so that's what i kind of t- tell myself or i hang out with people you know i, ha- I love friends i yeah. love my friends and i'm like oh i'm having a bad day can we just talk and get a glass of wine okay cool so i always have someone and if i don't i just talk to alexa that is my new oh yeah you're telling me home. earlier yeah i love alexa so no but just i mean being serious it's it's um i just try to deal with things yeah. i don't know i think it's important this is something i talk about on this podcast i you know talk about it a lot with it's very easy to get caught up yeah. in the bad shit and for it to feel like that's it. There is no future. You're going to, how you get through it when you're in a depressed state, you know, it's really hard. I feel to like kinda, people in LA talk a lot about depression and. I think people in uh, America in general. In America, you know, yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to talk to my psychiatrist. And it's like, oh shit. Like in Spain, I never heard anyone saying, I'm going to go talk to my psychiatrist. Yeah. If they have one. They shut the fuck up. Yeah. Here it's like they're bragging about going to the psychologist or, I mean, the shrink, whatever kind of shrink that you might have. And yeah. it's great. Like, I think we should all go to therapy at some point of our lives. And I don't think you're crazy if you go to therapy. It's just a way of getting things out or knowing yourself or yeah. whatever, right? But people are proud of it here of like, oh, like the other day I have a neighbor and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I was just hanging up with my, with my psychiatrist. I just didn't know how much of this pill, like the dosage that I needed to take because I wasn't feeling anything. I was like, oh shit. You know, why are you telling me this? I just met you. Like literally like that day, I didn't even know her name. So it's like, that's why are you telling me this? You know, people have a need to express their stuff. I don't know. It's yeah, I think so. I mean, that's I've, I've had a therapist on this podcast. My, he actually, him and I have kind of became good friends. And from what it seems like to me is that what a lot of people go to therapy for is this, like what you were just saying about when you talk to your friends. Right. right? You talk to friends? your friends. Some people don't have friends. Right. Some people don't have that connection with other people. Right. They're you know? afraid of maybe being themselves because yeah. uh, they might think that they're too much or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that comes. It's a way with, to it's a way to explore your own life, you know, your thoughts. Like, and it's great. I think it's great. Yeah. And I see what I've you're saying, though. One, the the though. bragging, right? That's the that's, that's the weird so thing. LA. And it's like L.A. And I've and people talk about it in L.A. People, it is weird. Like people from what, like you know, Joe Rogan talks about a lot too. Everyone's on fucking pills. Yeah, and it's it's nuts to me. Soccer moms. <laughs> taking pills, taking their kids to soccer. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand. I, I, I think it's just honestly, it's like life can be fucking hard for some people, and it's can be hard for everyone. Yeah, I mean, everybody's. I, but it depends on how you take things. I think too, like, I mean, is an illness, like yeah. depression. Well, is let an me illness, here, let I me guess. let me say something. I'm just thinking this well, because I guess, no, I I know, but yeah, I don't know if you can also self treat it with like the it's also the way your pattern like your yeah. thought pattern and the way you also your chemicals in your brain and everything yeah. right but what i want to say it's like sometimes obviously like i'm like oh i think that i'm going through a lot of shit and i'm here by myself i don't have my family i had a lot of like my life wasn't easy either i don't think my life was easy when I was younger. Um, but I just, I'm this kind of person that I push through shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because every time I told my mom, I think I need to go to shrink, she was like, you're fine. And I was like, okay, then I'm fine. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I just had to push through it by myself. Yeah. Well, let me ask you because, or let me bring this up because I think this is, you are that kind of person where you you're optimistic and it's not that you don't have bad days. It's at this point you've realized 
your pattern of getting through the bad days and knowing that it's not going to last forever and you're going to get through it. And what I would want to ask you is, what is it like? That's the issue that I could, that comes up with people in depression. I mean, I had some guy that is at some point going to come on the the podcast who is a therapist. I think he studied like psychiatry, studied um, philosophy, therapy, whatever. And um, he was telling me that he doesn't even think depression exists really the way that we talk about it. He, he was saying that depression from, you know, this is, this is, I'm going to butcher this or whatever, but yeah, he was saying like, depression has become this thing that you like can go to a doctor. You say you have depression and then they give you pills and you take it. But depression doesn't, this is this guy's words, but it's like, it's life. Life is there. There are good days and there are bad days. There are good periods. There are bad periods. It's not perfect all the time. There's going to be like a week where you don't do well. Sometimes your life isn't going well and you're not Mm going to feel good. And it's not like, you know, depression. This is what this guy was saying. It's right, it's like an attitude, like you, you were saying. Say that if you don't respect depression, some people get really upset because they take it very seriously. Well, what was it like in Spain? Was people that don't talk about depression in yeah. Spain? There so might be some depressed people, obviously, yeah. but I don't really hear so much about depression there. Yeah, I was I wondering did. what the culture, like, what are like no. the culture difference in that way. No, you can you can be like, oh, I'm going to shrink, but just because I need help with this or because I need to talk about this or that. But you don't really say I'm depressed. No. Like, I mean, maybe some people say it or Yeah, and there are also there is I there is We're I, more social, I yeah. would say, and we just in, like in Spain you mean? Yes. No. Like we like people usually have a lot of friends and it's you don't have time to think about depression yeah. in, when you're just having fun. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Depression comes when you're lonely, when you are being bored. Some days I'm bored and I'm like, I think I have depression. Yeah. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Go uh, have fun. Go well, that's such a good and- insight. That is a good insight because that's the issue that I think people fall into that. And let me just say that I think there is times where you have like an actual chemical imbalance. Of course, yes. And you know, that that's a completely different story, but I think what it sounds like you're getting at and which is, I'm glad you brought this up cuz this is something that I like to talk about. And a lot of actors I'd, go through it. Yeah, so, a lot of actors. Especially comedians. Yeah, and it's like it it really is you have I mean, and you got to remember you're a warrior. Like you have a fucking strong mind with like staying positive. A lot of people, they have the capability, but people, they, they don't, some people just innately aren't like that, you know? I know. And that you got to remember I that. I don't even that, think about it. Yeah. You know, and, just... and that's why like, what is the insight with what you can try to, to help people understand that, you know, depression, sometimes if you feel depressed, like you said, it's, Go outside, go talk to your friends, bored. speak to someone, go, you know, boredom, like yeah. severe boredom. Lonely. <laughs> can be like, you can, you can act, you can, or you, you know. Or you just hate what you do, your work, your yeah. town, your friends, uh, your body, your face. I don't know. It could just be like yeah. a, 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 an overall unhappiness yeah. that, okay, you don't like your body, go work out. Yeah. Don't eat the burger. Yeah. Don't complain about your body. Or whatever, uh, because I'm fat, so I'm not going out. I'm just staying at home. Well, do something about it. Like that's my attitude towards things. Like I'm not a complainer. I'm a doer. So it's like, okay, I don't like this. Well, I sometimes you cannot fix things, right? But like you try to make them better, or you try to make them in a way that you feel better about yourself, or compensate with something else. You know, you might not be the best looking person, but maybe you are super fun and people love talking to you or maybe you're super pretty, but you are, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's know just about saying. compensating too and feeling good about something that you have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't have to be perfect because none of us are perfect. Yeah. Not even the biggest stars that have made it because I mean, what is even making it? What is making it? I don't know. That's something else. I don't know what it is. I think that I think it's becoming more common and talked about now 
that a lot of the time the pe- the big famous stars have the most fucking problems. Like, it's, yeah, I mean, they, they commit you know, suicide. Yeah, it happens. Most of them. It's crazy. Well, no, mo- not most, but like a lot of them that you thought they were super happy and yeah. they were comics and everything yeah. was great in their lives. No, especially like, and I'm, this is like, I mean, I can be positive and everything, but I have a very dark inside too. I think that's, maybe that's part why of why you're this way. Yeah, because you, you face that darkness, which is an important thing to do. Right. I, I, I have that darkness and I just not let it stay inside. Like yeah. I just express it and yeah. I share it and I'm a sharer. Like I, I don't, Yeah. everybody knows everything about my personal life. It's just like, I'm, Yeah. I don't have secrets, honestly. Yeah. And, I Best way just, to be. I, I, I don't have, obviously I have regrets in my life, but I don't have, I just try to like do things in a way that I. You're I a winner. Know you know what I mean? To put it in simple terms, like you have that mentality. And, and let me just say that, like, I, I mean, I, I, I'll admit that I have a very dark view of the world. A lot of the time I, I, a lot of the time have a very fucking dark view of things. Me too. I, I feel like shit a lot of the time. And and not like to the point, especially now it's been changing, but I have like a very dark, like I see bad shit. I notice not great stuff. I can very easily feel myself falling into that feeling where of like, you know, but I'm not doing that's well. every sensitive person. Yeah, I think like, that's the I, case. It is, yeah. Right, you're it very is the sensitive. case. You've and, always been super sensitive and you'll yeah. always be. Yeah. So now you need to know how to deal with it. Exactly. And you need to just know that you are that. Yeah. So once you're going that way, recognize it and be like, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Like, well, that's okay. what's, that's what Let's I think. Navigate is, through it. This is good for us to talk about. You and I are both the same way that we don't fucking stop. Like we don't give up. I mean, think about it. Think about the yeah. people we've, we, I'm the same, like you came from another country, which is insane. I moved out here by myself from, from Texas, Texas. you know, just kind of with nothing. <laughs> and you and I are both still fucking hustling every day. It's been yeah. years, you know? And I think, that's something if there's, you know, in anything that I'll say about my own life that's helped me and it sounds like you're you're saying the same shit is like you got to keep fucking pushing through when yeah. you feel like shit. And you got to just keep like, fucking going. I don't I don't rejoice on the word hustling or pushing through shit. Like I try to like just keep it I love what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I'm not hustling. And like, I, but are you? Obviously, I have. Are because you lying I need to, to yourself, rent. though? But it's not a lie. It's just you can say the things in a positive way or in a negative way. Yeah. And if you say I'm hustling, then I get tired. <laughs> if I say that like one or two times a day, I get exhausted. <laughs> Even though I'm not I'm, like that. I'm like that. I, I somatize everything. Everything that comes mm. out. I feel it. And like, I'm just that person. So if I say, oh, I'm exhausted and I'm like, and I am actually, so now I'm more tired because I said it before, yeah. maybe 30 minutes before uh, I go. So um, I don't get tired ever, Macarena. Oh, I'm so I never get fucking tired. I mean, yeah, give me some of that. No. Yeah. Take a, take no, a, I know. Take no, that last I hate episode. that. I hate whiskey. Why do you hate whiskey? Ugh. I, How do I you got, hate whiskey? This is Jack Daniels. I got some good shit. too drunk when I was in Spain. When I was like little. I I used to have whiskey all the time. We would share a full bottle for two people. Wow. Like we would get a bottle and then it would be like, if there was like three people that one didn't have a partner to share a bottle with, it would be like, no, we can't share it. Like, just in case we don't get enough <laughs> drunk. You know what I mean? So yeah. we were very protective with our bottle and it would be like, it was here. Why now it's here? You know what I mean? Like who God, had a funny. drink? That's it was ridiculous. like that. It was ridiculous. So <laughs> I don't take whiskey anymore, nor rum. That's now smart. I'm a gin tonic person. Nice. nice. Yeah, I like gin I don't drink often. I've been taking some shots for the podcast. It loosens me up. Uh, I don't, I don't, I just get, I drink when I want to just have like fun. Go, right? When I'm go out, when yeah. I go out and everything. But I, I'm not this, I never had a glass of wine by myself in my house or a beer by myself in my house. I'm a social drinker. So if I know that I'm going to go to bed now, why have a shot? You know what I mean? Yeah. I just see it as 
let's just have fun, all of us, you know, like a group thing yeah, of for sure. Yeah, social. You know something I want to ask you about? This is kind of making me think about this. I don't know where you could go with it, but the culture difference in Spain and America is so different. What, like, I find it very interesting. There's a lot of stuff, like you were saying when you first moved here, there are differences, things you were noticing, talking about the depression and stuff. What is? What are some of the biggest differences? Oh, the drinking. You guys drink as if you're going to run out in the bar. <laughs> like, <laughs> Really? Here? I would think maybe in Spain you guys you drink a what? lot. No, we drink a lot, but we socially drink a lot. Mm-hmm. And we just... It's so weird. We know how to manage alcohol. We can yeah. get drunk as fuck, but we're standing up at 6 a.m., 8 a.m., yeah. and we still go to have breakfast, yeah. sit down, have a coffee or toast, whatever shit we're eating, and go home. <laughs> and sometimes even drive. I know it's really bad to say, but Macarena, what the hell? I know it's so bad. You're, are you condoning drinking and driving? No, it's horrible. <laughs> and I know, but I, I mean, I've done it. Oh yeah, everyone's done it. I've fucking done it. So and don't I regret it. it. Please I, don't do it. Please don't. I regret it. I mean, I drove motorcycles and cars and everything bad. No. But I just, I was a fucking irresponsible bitch. You know what I mean? So I don't do it anymore at all. But um, what I was going to say is that we know how to handle alcohol a little bit better, I would say. Because we start drinking at a younger age. And most people don't What's the drinking age in uh, Spain? 18. 18. But I started drinking since I was like, 14 or 13 like because you would just go out like yeah. to streets and your older friends would buy the alcohol yeah. and then you just start drinking with them it probably depends too where you're from in america you know d- different right. everywhere you go maybe but the thing is like here you're not allowed to drink until you're 21 so what do you do you take drugs right yeah. is it easier to get it i don't fucking know i think it would be difficult for, more difficult for me to get it but still it's like it's like, no, I can not drink. I'm going to drink it all. Like, I'm going to make up for all that time that I couldn't drink. It's kind of that. Some people go through that shit if they don't drink. I I drank at a very young age where I'm from. I'm from a fall, small fucking town in Texas. My and dad was going on. My dad would be like, taste this wine. And I was like, <laughs> I was little, maybe like, what, six, seven? Damn. I was like, no, I don't. I don't like it. I don't want it. Yeah. Taste it. You need to start recognizing the good ones and the bad ones. Wow. And I was like, shit. Like, I didn't want it. I didn't. You guys have good Spain. Or you guys have good wine in Spain. We do. Right? And yeah. my dad was a big fan of wine. So it's like, oh, cool. we had a little um, winery thing really? in my house. Oh, like that's a little cool. room with the temperature and the humidity. And nice. it's kind of cool. My dad loved it. So he was, he really wanted me to have a palate for it. Right. And, I've been drinking since I'm like, since I can't remember, yeah. like, but not drunk, obviously. But sometimes he will be like, oh, do you want like to get, um, um, we call it, uh, una clarita or, uh, clarita is with beer. So you mm. get a beer and you add casera. That is like seven up kind of thing. Mm. So you add Sounds that. Sounds good. Yeah. And it's, it's nice and it's smooth. And yeah. I would, I would have that at lunchtime with my oh. dad. Oh, I think that's good. Or the wine mixed with that too. So I think it's, it's good doing reduced. it younger. Like so, you, now you just kind of got out of your system. That is, that, my there, dad I, would be like, "Don't have coke. That's <laughs> shit. Have some wine." Wow, that's it interesting. was that. That is really interesting. Actually, yeah. that's a big culture difference. It was that he was like, for sure, coke. Why are you drinking that? That's just sugar and shit and blah blah. blah. Yeah. Have some wine that is actually good for you and blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah, it that's, was that. it's definitely a big difference. So I don't difference. see it as a... It's not all... That does not happen. You can't uh, take it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I mean, I don't want to... You know, I have no fucking idea. It's There's a ton of different cultures and shit in America, but it definitely seems to me not to be often that parents... It's more taboo. Yeah, it's like a little more taboo when you're younger, like for sure. Yeah. People have crazy sex stories in this country, but nobody really talks about them op- openly. Yeah, it's very true. In Spain, you can have... Like, I would say it's more, as if people are not as fucking crazy, even though it's Europe and we have the fame that we're super sexual or whatever. But it's like, I don't think it's as crazy. And if it's that crazy, people just talk about it yeah. more openly. Yeah. I don't know. Here's sex and alcohol is a taboo. 
And I and drugs is not a taboo, I think. And, and here you mean? People love talking. Oh, yeah, I love taking psychedelics. And yeah. I love taking... That's true. In Spain, you don't talk about drugs. Really? No. That's weird. See, no. I think it's good Weed to talk about psychedelics. Weed is a drug there. Weed is like... That's interesting. Yeah, I'm like... Really? Oh, I'm going to smoke a joint. You're a drug addict. What? Yes. That's weird. See, yeah. I actually... See? I, I like that about America. I think we, psychedelics and that kind of thing, the taboo, the stigma, the stigma needs to be fucking gone around psychedelics and stuff. I have never had any, I've never taken any drugs. So yeah, I can you have, really. You've smoked weed. Well, weed, yeah, but. That's well, a drug. But, but it's legal. It's a drug. But it's legal. You've never done like I've psychedelics? I've never done coke, anything? psychedelics. Why not? None of that. I'm, I think I have a very addictive personality and I'm very impulsive. Mm. So if I really liked any we of need that, to do mushrooms. I'll probably keep doing it. Let's do you know mushrooms. What I mean? Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to risk. Mushrooms my is not shit. fucking addicting. So I have some friends that they've done it and they're like, anytime I have an excuse to do mushrooms, I just do them but because I freaking love them. Those no, I've never done mushrooms. I'll I say it, I want to eat mushrooms every day. No <laughs> like mushrooms. Going to a forest and like you've never so you've never you've never done any psychedelics. I was gonna do mushrooms in Amsterdam when I went a few years ago in Christmas time, but I they looked so bad to me. It felt like. It looked so not appealing that I was like, I'll just get drunk. I can't even imagine you on like an insane psychedelic. You would be like. You would love it. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Let's do it. <laughs> you didn't see me last weekend. It God. was just an alcohol. Let's do it. Yeah. Think so. about it. That would be a crazy experience. Yeah. that I don't I can't even imagine. Honestly. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've been to like huge festivals, like music festivals and stuff in Spain, like. I crossed the country just like to go to, um, you know, uh, techno and all that kind of music festivals yeah. like that people go like fucking like high. Yeah. Right. And I was there sober, just like having beer. Yeah. And taking care of my friends. Yeah. I can't imagine what you would be like. on. You're already like open and like. I don't care. It's like, I was just like, I was just like vibing with everyone yeah. as much as. If I you, wasn't you would, drugs. What if you, you do mushrooms and you meet God? Uh, I'll probably say hi. I don't know. Like That's hi. Crazy. And leave. Yeah. Because well, I would have probably nothing think to say that to I'm God. dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's the experience. And I would try to leave. Have you heard, you've heard of DMT? Have you heard of DMT? DMT? What is that? It's another psychedelic. It's like DMT. an intense psychedelic. I don't want to try that. Take some DMT, dimethyltryptamine, it shoots you out. Dimethyltryptamine. You okay, have heard of it? Kill yourself. No. No, it's not that. It's it's a natural drug. And it's, I mean, it, your soul leaves your body when you do it. And you go meet aliens in another uh, dimension. Uh, That's what everyone says. <laughs> you don't want me to go meet aliens. Why not? Oh, uh, no. I don't know what I would do to them. Honestly, yeah. I would just like, I don't know. I would trip. Yeah. It's crazy. I so can't, much. Like, I, I, maybe I would just keep trying to meet them, to have more conversations with them, to see if I can get something else out that of them. That actually is something that happens. And then I would just keep happens. taking that drug. Yeah, that's something that happens. There, there are people that say that they've done that. They've taken it and they've taken it again and they try to do it again to have another experience. And that's, you know, that not, see, could not be good. I would probably be that person, so I probably should and This kind of it. shit in Spain, you guys... People do super. drugs, but it's more like a taboo thing. You don't it's talk about it. That's so weird. The you difference. buy drugs and then uh, you take them in the bathroom. What's legal in Spain? You don't Spain? even know that your friends did drugs. What's legal right now in Spain? Uh, alcohol. Really? Weed? No? Mm -mm. Really? No. Huh. It's interesting. No, what do go, you think about weed being legal? You go to the, to the gypsy in the neighborhood next to yours and then you buy it that came from that. Morocco. And wow. that came mm. in the butt of the, of the. Oh wow! Yeah, Jesus. They put well, what do you think about hole. like marijuana being legalized in California completely? I think it's great. I you think? think oh, every, you do? Uh -huh. I think every drug should be legal. Why? Because the moment you tell somebody you can't do it, is when you want it more. More. Very true. So if it was legal, everything people would get sick of it. It, it wouldn't be fun anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably uh well you're and you said it that here I'm a rebel, so I'm that kind of person. Yeah. Like 
Oh, I can't cross the street、uh, without the pet sing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pet sing, that's something else. That I was like, why is it in like an Asian language? Oh, gosh.、Gotcha. Is it pedestrian crossing? Pedestrian like, crossing. Pet sing? Why is it abbreviated in something that should be very well explained? <laughs> that is where you should cross to、yeah. not die, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's a different topic. But、um, the, the thing, yeah, I, I'm like, oh, I can't cross here. I'm going to cross here. Or、yeah. I'm that kind of person, you know? I don't do it, but I, well, sometimes I do, but I want it when、yeah. they tell me no. And I think if everything was legal, legal it, would be, it, would be, it wouldn't be as fun. Yeah, that's、And、a theory. And then people, you know? We just see it like alcohol, maybe. Yeah. Or, I don't know. Maybe some people just take advantage of it, but I've it's heard. It's interesting. It's interesting that alcohol and cigarettes are legal, but fucking psilocybin isn't legal. What's psilocybin? It's mushrooms,、oh. magic mushroom. <laughs>、okay. Yeah, alcohol is, you know. Yeah, it, that's natural. Isn't it a little, you take it from the forest? Yeah, mushrooms. From the fairy、yeah. forest? You take it from the fairy forest. <laughs> the fairies come down and give it to you. Right, right, right. It, it is one of those things, you know, it's interesting. Cigarettes. That cigarettes are illegal, but marijuana is kind of still, there's a taboo around、the、marijuana. Cigarettes will make you high to just. Well, yeah, and cigarettes fucking kill you. But it's like everything alcohol kills you, marijuana kills you. That's what I'm、you. saying. Alcohol, Chocolate kills you. Marijuana doesn't kill you. Marijuana doesn't kill you. It kills you. It's、How? smoke that goes in your lungs. It doesn't kill you. And it's a substance that goes to your brain. There's、yeah. no case of someone dying from marijuana. Because people haven't been openly talking about it. Well, how do people die from marijuana? I don't know, but is, they just recently legalized, legalized it. Legalized it. So. No one dies from marijuana, I'm not going to. You don't know. You don't I know. Do know. You don't know. I'm not an expert, but. But you don't know. Because people haven't been talking about it. Probably, people, probably the person that smokes marijuana smokes cigarettes too. And they're like, oh, the cigarettes kill them. I'm not trying to defend cigarettes, but I'm just saying that everything can kill you, even going to the gym. Oh, yeah, everything can kill、If、you. But you cigarettes. You run so much you know, and you give your heart like crazy highs and downs and highs and downs.、Yeah. You, can, you can die too.、Yeah. There's at least a die from just like exposing themselves to like high intensity workouts. Yeah, and you can die from two inches of water. And you、Everyone、can、knows. die from walking、But、in the street and stepping on like a, on, on a banana and sleeping. But cigarettes and, have, they're fucking cancer sticks. Everything is bad, even the air that you breathe. Sure. But you're What are you going to do? Are you now going to wear a mask? No, just、do. fucking go out, breathe it. If you die, bad luck.、Yeah. What the fuck are we going to do?、Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just, just like if you think about all the things that can kill you, all the things that, that、uh, it's, it's too much. It's like live your life the best that you can. Try to not do any bad things to anyone. Try to just like, Be the best version of yourself that you can be, not harm people around you, like just try to help them. If you can, good. If you can't help them, fine too, because you're not here, the savior of the world. But just like try to do little things that、yeah. makes the world better. And that's、yeah. it, you know? And, and that's the reason why actually I love doing comedy because it's、so, a therapy. I was about to ask you, like, it's a therapy.、Yeah. It's, It's very therapeutical and it's also, it's like in comedy, we talk about fucked up things, right? Most、yeah. of the times. And that's funny because something that you thought that it was like talking as an audience, like, oh shit, they're talking about that. That's kind of taboo. And then you want to laugh, but you hear the person next to you laughing too. Then it gives you permission to laugh.、Yeah. And then it's not、yep. that big of a deal because there's like a collective mind of laughs、yeah. that we're making of something that is actually like maybe a big deal or a big problem or something that is fucked up.、Yeah. We're making fun of it. So we're doing therapy together. That's a good way to look at it. And I love doing、yeah. that because you can. Maybe a person that is oppressed goes to see your show.、Yeah. And maybe they leave laughing and they, they, they're super happy and they enjoyed it and they, they had a great time and they go home and they're not as sad anymore.、Yeah. So you made like, their life a little better that night, you know? Yeah, so、sure. I love doing that. And I, I, I just I, I love making people laugh in my person. Like, 
as a day 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 to day person, like yeah. my daily life, and doing comedy is great for that too. You know, for yeah. like making it a professional career. Yeah. That is obviously the way you say the things are yeah. very different. In I the think way you, you, formulate you things, need to but. fucking stick to it because. I see that. I definitely see you doing it and doing really well with stand up comedy. Thank I you. really do. I love it. Do you so. think of it? Do you also think of this is how I think stand up comedy is fucking important. Like it's just okay. like Tell which me. is which is like if you think of it as and it, this is shitty. This is I know like the whole political thing, like I don't know if you care to talk about politics. No. Just that's <laughs> um, negative. Always. Like well, but with stand up comedy, to me, a lot of the best stand up comedians were people that talked about shit that other people don't talk about. They point right. shit out, like you were saying earlier, yeah. and they push the limits. Just you push the limits. You talk you talk about shit that some people are scared to talk about, shit that can be offensive to people. Yeah. And you kind of push the boundary. Because who the fuck else is going to do it? I mean, I'm very Everything happy. Everything needs to be talked about. I know. And I am lucky because I'm in a country that has a lot of freedom of like expression. And um, so, well, how is Spain in terms of freedom of speech and all that? Freedom of speech, right now? yeah, uh, it's it's okay, but it's not as open. Really, I would say. Hmm. I mean, people talk shit, but then you're gonna be in the eye of the, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more like a like a village, I would say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, in that sense. Yeah, I but here is like saying. anybody like in Spain, people talk shit about the politicians and everything. But here is different. Here yeah. they shit on Trump so much, like yeah. in like a very harsh way. Yeah, that's shocking to me because it's like, oh wow, that's the president. That person can can like kick you out. I don't know something. I don't know, like <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So I think America in that sense is is a very nice place yeah. to do stand up. But also I. And and I'm very happy because I I know that some some standups have been like threatened to death if they talk about their politicians in their yeah. countries and they cannot be a standup because they are Muslims and they have to you know mm, like women they're yeah. women and they're Muslims and they're like you can't do standup because you're a woman and yeah. you're Muslim and you're religion and it's like come on really in yeah. this day and age so I'm with you there. So I'm happy that you know I'm, I'm in this country that I'm that I don't have any restrictions and I can just like speak my mind and just be bold and yeah. just if you don't like it, don't come see me. And if I want to see you. It, I want to actually see you do. Show. Yeah, I'll invite you for yeah. sure. When next time you go to the comedy store, I don't know. I'll let you know for sure. Tell but me for sure. Yes. I'll, I'll record it. Yeah. You're not allowed to record? No, not at the comedy store. You can mm. record the sound, but you cannot actually do video. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, Macarena. But yeah, it was very nice talking to you. Yeah, we're like pushing two hours almost. I, I, I didn't no. think we'd go to it. Yeah, it's been like two an hour, hours, about and an I was hour like, and 45 minutes. Your podcasts minutes. are too long. I this think I'm we telling should you. just See? do 30 minutes. This is what I'm telling you. When you I start to get a into a conversation. I yeah, talk Yeah, that's much. what I was telling you. I love it. This is interesting to me. Yeah, I hope I I said something interesting. You did, Tristan. and I hope it helped someone anywhere in the world or to just like fucking do it. Yeah, that's like my best advice that I can say. Just fucking do it. Who that's cares? the best advice. Two things: don't take advice. Don't take advice from anyone. And, <laughs> and the second advice: just fucking do it. Yeah. Just don't think too much. If you overthink things, then you never do them. So. Just fucking do it and don't take everybody's advice. Just take whoever's you or your mentors or like one Carve or two people. Carve your own path in life. One, yeah, like one or two people advice, like, you know, that they know, you know that they know what they're saying. And that's it. That's it. Don't just listen to everyone. No, don't listen to this podcast. Oh shit, it's too late. Listen fuck. to this podcast. Fuck. Listen it's to too it. Late. Just don't fucking <laughs> take advice from us. We don't know what no. the fuck we're talking about. No, we're just talking shit. Shooting the shit. Well, Macarena, I really appreciate you coming on. And I want to do it again. You. Let's go have let's go get drunk. You want to go to the bar down the street? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.